I need a motion to come out of closed session, please. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor of coming out of closed session, indicate by raising your right hand. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Henderson, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, please. If you all would stand and join. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam, Madam Chair, yes. we need a motion to approve the agenda at this point, it, it, which is not on the agenda. All right. Um, and um, in that motion, you should, uh, the motion should also include removing okay. items 4E, 4G, 4H, and 4I, and moving item 5A from the consent agenda to 4J. I, I need a motion to remove um, 4E, G, H, and I, and to add 4J, which is the General Personnel Board Report, to board action. And remove it from the consent agenda. And remove it from the consent agenda. No, we don't need you now because nope. he summarized it. Exactly. He was okay. looking at me, though, so. But I need Chair, a motion. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda with the removal of items 4E, G, H, and I, and um, pulling the general personnel report up. To 4J. To 4J. Second. All right. All in favor, indicate by raising your right hand. Any opposed? Okay. Agenda has been approved. Dr. Dunsmore. Good morning, Madam Chair, board members. Thank you for coming in on uh, this uh, special call of meeting. I know uh, it takes away from a lot of your personal schedule, so it is much appreciated. So in an effort to keep things moving, um, we will go right along and hopefully uh, not hold everybody up. First on the agenda are just an update by Dr. Harrell on our projects at Southern Wayne High and Northwest Elementary. I would like to add before we get started, <coughs> Mr. Honeycutt and I have had numerous conversations and Madam Chairman, you were in the uh, meeting with uh, Mr. Hayes and myself and uh, the county manager and some of the commissioners as we're moving forward with that. Once we get out to bid, um, we are gonna put together a memorandum of understanding that all of our present funding will be uh, steered towards these two projects to get them completed and that we as a board are going to get behind that and get these done uh, just on the nature of uh, the long time that they've been on the books and then as we move forward we're working on an upgraded facilities plan <coughs> that will include um, updates to present buildings as well as future needs that we will tie in with the work that the student reassignment committee is doing. So we're hoping to have that done here in the next several weeks. Um, we will present that to this board and then also to the county commissioners. All right. Good morning, Dr. Harrell. Good morning. Mr. Vice Chair, members of the board, Dr. Dunsmore, just to give you an update on our projects at Northwest and at Southern Wayne, got good news at both of our projects. At Northwest, our civil survey is complete. I've been working with um, <coughs> Ms. Wolf as well as Tim Stewart with Park and Associates. Our last thing we're trying to iron out is our parking situation at the school. So we're looking at a proposal to add some parking spaces out front as well as to lengthen her driveway so to allow her to have more car stacking ability uh, in her morning and afternoon dismissal times. Morning when she takes in so she can get people off the road because we know that her school and Northeast are pretty similar and have those issues of traffic being backed up onto the road in the morning time in the afternoon. So everything there is done. I actually spoke with Mr. Stewart this morning to give him our final ideas because we want to make sure we do our best to keep uh, cars and buses from not interacting together in the same parking lot. Uh, also at Southern Wayne High School I spoke with the um, surveyor this weekend, I actually spoke to him Saturday, he just <coughs> completed the survey for Southern Wayne High School. 
So that is complete. I'm just waiting for him to get the uh, CAD file and drawing back to us. I should have that tomorrow. I spoke with uh, Mr. Baker also over the weekend, and he has assured me that it would take about two weeks once we get these files back to merge the two together, our new building plan for the school, as well as the civil, merge those two documents and get it ready for bid. So we're looking at about two weeks from there. Southern Wayne, I, I feel good about the project. I know we were shooting to have it out by the end of July, but what a lot of people didn't realize that Southern Wayne, that was a larger area to survey, including woodland, and we had no existing as-built documents for that building. So everything out there from sewer, electrical, <coughs> communications, everything had to be individually located to find those things. There is one item I would like to include in the project. I've asked Mr. Baker to include it. Include it excuse me. We do have some uh, sewer line issues at Southern Wayne High School. As you're probably aware, the line that leaves that <coughs> campus at the back of the school uh, goes underneath the baseball field in left field as it exits the back of the property close to the wood line. And we've had some routes to infiltrate that line. And Keen Plumbing comes about three times a year to jet that line out for us. So I would like, I've spoken with uh, Mr. Baker about including that in the project to have that line repaired while we're out there. So all in all, I think we're on schedule uh, considering <coughs> what we've run into. We, obviously, we did have a couple of days that was very, very wet these last couple weeks. We've had a monsoon in places to try and be outside to get it done, but I feel good about where we are at this time. Questions that you may have that I might be able to answer for you. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. So you're not anticipating this project to go out to bid for another two weeks? Yes, sir. I'm thinking two weeks by the time I get the document, uh, hopefully tomorrow, I'll give <coughs> that to Mr. Baker at Pinnacle. It'll take two weeks for him to get it together and put it to bid. Now, we have uh, the contracts for us which for the um, Southern Wayne project and for the North, Northwest project. I received those last week. We're finalizing those to put those out to bid. So all, everything is paperwork is going on behind the scenes to get this done. I also contacted um, our timber buyer to let him know that we were done with that survey, the outside portion. So I'm just waiting for a phone call from him uh, because, yeah, as we had discussed before, he said at the minimum he could potentially remove the timber before school starts where the gym's going to be built to get that out of the way. So yes, sir, Mr. Anderson, I'm, I'm anticipating two weeks for us to be able to go out. Are you still anticipating that the timber will be removed before school? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, because our students return on the 27th in that area, so I think that we can get that. As soon as I talk to Mr. Rayner with his company, I can find out for sure what his plans are. When we go out for bid, what is the time frame? The last motion that the board uh, made, Mr. Henderson made the motion, was to have that project at Southern Lane open for no longer than 45 days. Okay. So when that one goes out, it'll be open for 45 days. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Dr. Yes, Heron. Thank you. All right. Uh, student drug testing discussion. Is that going to be Mrs. Strickland? Okay, well, um, it was basically my understanding that I was just going to recap the board on what the policy committee had come forward with. And Dr. Mason, uh, Ms. Burden, and Mr. West, if there's something that I miss or misstate, please step in and correct me. But for the rest of the board and for the public, we have been discussing the potential of a drug testing um, system being implemented. Initially, it was for or presented as student athletes. As it worked its way through policy, and through the attorney, we have been um, talking about anyone that is a part of a special project, of anything that would be a privilege. So that would also include anyone that had a parking pass, anyone in band, anyone that did any sort of extracurricular activity that was seen as a privilege, not a right to the students. So obviously it, within that realm, it would not be all students. And then I think that there might be some discussion later coming into would we include all students? So there has absolutely been nothing decided on the drug testing at this point, but when you look underneath board action, you're going to see where there is a new policy on random drug testing for information only, and that is for each of you to begin to dig through and please send your input to us, your opinions, et cetera. So as we go through this in policy with the attorneys, we can have the feedback from the public and from the board on if this is something we want to do and if we're going to do it, how we're going to do it. One thing we did have um, um, 
come out of policy was we asked Mr. Hayes to do a report on how much it would actually cost if we used uh, the percentages per school that was based off anyone taking advantage of a privilege at that point. Have we received the numbers if it was the whole school? No, we received the numbers with the percentages. Just for the right, percentages of, of the privilege activities, yes. not the whole school. So that's something else we're looking at. <laughs> Obviously, one of my concerns inlays is if you're going to spend the money on side A, where's it coming from on side B? So that's some other things that I would like us to discuss as a board as we work through this process. But there is no doubt that this is not something that the board is ready to move forward on at the next board meeting. This is going to be a process. Um, did I miss anything? No. Mr. West? No. Okay. I would just like to ask, Mr. Hayes, did you get the email that I sent back to you when I received the... Uh... I did. Okay. Because I, I, I asked, asked about question. whole school. Well, and that's why I mentioned that. I didn't think we had gotten that one back No, yet. we haven't. Okay. okay. So, any questions from the rest any of the board? Any questions from the uh, other board members? I think I'll hold mine until we get actually into the policy discussion. Okay. I think I did review the policy. Um, I did have just a few questions because whether whether we go forward with any additional discussions on this or not, to <coughs> me, we need to make sure that we are inclusive of every potential um, issue that 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 is a part of this. Uh, the first question that comes to mind, you know, we have a policy. We're talking about drug testing students. Okay, what is what is what is our first? What is our uh, reason for doing this? What's the, where's the empirical data that says this is something we need to do? Okay, that's that's the first question, um, and I have not seen that. Number two, um, once if we do find a student that is um, that that tests positive for drugs, what do we plan to do about it? We're going to we're going to suspend them from school. We're going to put them in rehab. What we what 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 are we going to do with that? Yeah. You know, it's just it's it's one thing to, to drug test somebody, but then what are you going to do? You know, um, so it, it's <coughs> there's a whole lot more to this yes. than just yes. do we want a drug policy? Well, what are, you know, why do we need it? Right. What is it based on? And then if you do do it, what are you going to do with the information once you find out a kid? Test positive, you know, well. and then, and then to then to add to it, let's keep in mind that we have teachers in our school system and people here work central office who don't get tested after they get hired. They don't get tested either. So let's 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 make sure we're inclusive <clears throat> if we're going if we're going to go there. Yeah, and I don't disagree with that at all. And that was one of my kind of X factors as as we move through this. Is I'd like to see the data. From the other schools, you know, the gentleman that spoke with us said, well, we had a reduction from like 20-some percent to like 5 percent of student athletes that were positive. That's wonderful if that's our goal to get them off, off drugs. Um, but one of the conversations that I actually had with Mr. West after the meeting was, I, I personally feel that if we're going to go forward with this, you have to differentiate between the students that we already have the policy in place for if you're caught dealing, selling, or consuming on campus versus the students that may recreationally on the weekends, but they're an athlete and then they hit hot. You cannot kick them out of school. It, it, I think it gets back into more of our grace and restoration that we've talked about um, before with students shouldn't, we should follow policy on, on the consumption. We should have those options to help them. Is our, is our goal to help them or is our goal to punish them? And so those are absolute options that this discussion is going to be for and so we definitely want you to send these to us in policy as we work through it before we ever get close to a vote Time. any other discussion all right custodial services presentation Before I uh, begin, just to let you know, we have done our best to um, answer the questions that I know Mr. Smith had, uh, Mr. Pridgen had. So I have a lot of information that I'm more than happy to share with you or committee or anyone if you would like to, to dig into it deeper um, before you move forward with the potential decision here. Because I know this is a very important decision for all of us in our county in general. So what I'd like to do today for the time that we have 
is just to summarize some of the things that, that we've done based upon your request and a couple of the general um, findings that, that we have or that I've, I've come up with looking at the data. So one of the things that, that we did, there was a request to look at surveying our staff members in schools where High Standard currently cleans. And we have eight campuses that High Standard currently cleans. And I like to thank um, Mr. Dirksen for helping me get the survey together very fast. Um, our survey had basically four questions on it. I did give staff the opportunity to email me if they wanted to identify themselves and to list some of their uh, concerns that might not be addressed with the survey and I did have a handful to email me and provided some valuable feedback and of course I replied to them and told them thank you for providing that feedback and if they had any additional comments they could uh, contact me in length if they needed to. <coughs> Excuse me. So one of the questions we asked just in general was are you aware that High Standard cleans your building and out of that out of the 126 respondents 97 percent said they were aware that High Standard did clean their building. Um, and that was a concern because we know that we have some staff sometimes that changes and high standards have been cleaning these eight schools for two years now. Um, one of the questions was, do you feel your classroom is in better shape as you get ready to come each morning? Is it clean for the instructional day? And basically 48% said yes and 51% said no in that survey response. Another question we asked was, do you feel that your building basically was in better shape than what it was two years ago? And we left the opportunity here for our staff member to say they were unsure because the staff member may either not be aware or they may have not been with us the entire two years or remember previous conditions of what the building may have been. Um, seven, excuse me, 31% said yes, they felt like their building was in better shape. 17% said they were unsure, which could address those staff members that may have not been with us for the entire two years. 51% said that they did not feel like it was in better shape. Yeah. Looking at the overall, we, we gave a Likert scale of how, um, how satisfied are you with the cleanliness of your building. So a Likert scale, of course, is one being the least to 10 being the most. So neutral, I call that a number five. Neutral, we had about 12% of our staff that were neutral. They were on the border. 36% were from that one to four. And then 50 to 51% were from the six to 10 that they felt like the building was better. So taking that, I had a couple of staff members to give me some feedback. There was very good feedback as well as I um, tried to do my best due diligence to speak to all the principals. I spoke to the principals that have high standard. I also did a survey to principals that did not have high standard to look at our current concerns they may have. Um, the principals that I spoke with for high standard gave me some awesome feedback, great group of professionals. Um, all in all, they were pleased overall with their performance that they had. Um, their responsiveness, I had one principal say that um, their response, response the first year was awesome. They had slacked off just a little bit, but they were pleased overall. The biggest concern that I saw from our principals was that, um, and I got this from two or three, some really good feedback, was that they did an awesome job with our public spaces, our um, hallways, lobbies, bathrooms, they did a great job there. The concern was the same that was addressed from the principals that was our classroom spaces, look in there. <coughs> Excuse me, and it was detail items, things like cleaning blinds, making sure the trash is taken out, making sure the room is swept periodically like it needs to be. So it wasn't large items, it was detailed things that needed to be done. Um, the other thing that was a good feedback from our principals, and again, I'm happy to go in this in depth, in detail, so you can look at all the items. It's a lot of data and information. Um, overall, when the principal survey, 94% of the principals, when I asked them, would you welcome an opportunity for someone like me to monitor and help you with your custodial's job performance and making sure your building is clean, 94% said yes. Now these were principals that uh, do not have high standards, so I had 18 to respond to that survey. So I only had one really say no. I also had some questions about are you satisfied with your custodial training? Well, I had 55% to say yes and 47% to say no. Well, I've already told you <coughs> in the previous board meetings that we, we, we do not do any training for our custodial staff. Well, what that tells me as we've discussed that is we have a couple of schools that have some veteran staff in place and that staff has done a consistent job. I did get feedback from principals that had some concerns about turnover. Um, one principal said that they had been in school for nine years. They've had five different changes in nine years for custodial staff. And they've had some inconsistencies. Also had some concerns expressed about um, 
level of, of performance and ability of some of our custodial staff. Um, some of the things that really come out, and I'm, and I'm happy to share this with you, you know, I'm a, I like to try and be organized and I like to have some things when I make recommendations um, as I looked at this, and I'm happy to share those with you in depth. One of the things that come out is, as far as high standard goes, they do a really good job at the public spaces. There's some concerns in our classroom areas, but I'll break that down into a couple different things. Number one, uh, I think we really need to look at our job descriptions of our individuals and our employees. We really need to look at what our day porters are responsible for and what any contractual service person that we hire, I'm not just saying this for any cleaning agency, to make sure we're clearly defining what we expect out of our employees as well as what we expect out of our people that we contract services with. For example, I had one principal tell me that they would speak to the day porter and the day porter would say, well, that would be not my responsibility. That belongs to high standard. And then they would speak to high standard and high standard would say, well, that's your day porter's responsibility. So that could encompass some of these things that there's a perception that it's not getting done. The other thing was making sure, and I, I know I've mentioned this and I'm not want to take on more responsibility, but having some process to be able to monitor what is going on um, and setting a goal for what we want, what we expect, and then be willing to invest in that goal. For example, one of the concerns that a principal had was maintaining their floors and having training for maintaining floors. <coughs> and having those floors shiny the entire year long. Well, they look beautiful at the beginning of the year and then we might redo those floors in high schools at the semester break. But during that uh, period of time between beginning and end or middle year, what do we do? Well, there can be systems and things put in place. If this is something we want to do, then my passion would be then we decide, we make an investment in that and we're willing to put resources to get this done as well as monitoring things on Saturday to double check, make sure things are done. Um, and I have other things as I glean this data, I like to come forward with steps and processes to help make the job uh, better and easier for us. So I can continue, but there's a lot of data. Um, Mr. Smith had concerns about the intangibles. Uh, and to address your concern, Mr. Smith, one of the questions we did ask was, um, would you have a concern if uh, you had your building cleaned at night and then if you had fewer staff in the, in the campus? It was really interesting, that question. Um, a lot of the principals felt like that they could get things done better at night simply because of the traffic in the building during the day. As we've been principals, we know what our custodians have to do. And you've got 750, 1,000 people in the building trying to get all of this done during that day. That question seemed to ring true more with the elementary uh, principals, and it was anonymous. I did not ask the principals to give me their information, but you could tell by their responses that in the elementary level, um, those principals feel that these staff members build a bond with their students and are more part of the family where high school of course is spread out there's so many things going on so your intangible question seemed to come more into with elementary grades than it did with our middle and high school so if you if you have that I've, I've summarized a lot of data for you very quickly Again, I'm happy to speak with a committee or, or speak with any of you and, and share this uh, individual data. I've told everyone in this survey that is anonymous unless they wanted to share their information with me. Again, I had a few staff members as well as the principals, but even this information I can share does not have any specific identifiers that tell you who said what or when or where. Um, I did have one principal talk about training, and when I asked that um, specific principal about training, their concern was, their thought would be, they welcomed high standard because their training level should already be there versus what our particular level may be. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, Mrs. Smith. I'm I had to give him instructions. I'm scared to open my mouth. <laughs> um, Mr. Harold, uh, excellent summary. I, I appreciate that effort because that is definitely something that we felt um, that would be necessary in order for us to make an informed decision going forward. The You and I worked together in this school system in years <coughs> past and you and I remember a time when we had a department called Auxiliary Services and Auxiliary Services was headed up by one of the assistant superintendents and it was broken up into four divisions. 
you had uh, technology, you had transportation, you had operations and maintenance. And it's my understanding that operations and maintenance have been combined? Yes, my understanding right now is talking with um, Mr. Lassiter, because I've, I've been and met with my departments, that operations is under maintenance now. So Mr. Lassiter is technically the director of both areas. And he has an office at both locations. He has an office in the operations department and of course at maintenance. And he does go over to operations a day or two out of the week to see and check in. Well, that, that leads me to my, my uh, question and my statement. Um, when we had a separate operations department whose main focus was custodial duties, that is primarily what they focused on system-wide, um, I don't recall having some of these issues that you brought up. And, and I'm not saying that maintenance cannot handle it. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just suggesting that uh, there there being a focus, someone dedicated to this, instead of one person having an office in two different locations, right. seems to me that we might need to have an individual whose job is to make sure that our custodial, custodial staff is highly trained um, and someone whose main focus is the custodial responsibilities throughout the school system. And, um, you know, he's retired now, but Mr. Sutherland, Sutherland was one of the best there ever was. was. And we just didn't have these concerns then. So, I mean, just your thoughts on that. I, I, I think we have a couple. Your, your thought, and you're correct, we worked together for a while, and your thought is the same as mine on, on, on some pages. Is when Mr. Sutherland was here and that department was separate and um, the standard was there, and Mr. Sutherland was the one that did go out mm -hmm. and did check on custodial mm -hmm. staff. And, then, and we did have um, some level of training provided from vendors and those that would provide us with wax and, and those things there. I, I think there's a side of that as well, Mr. Smith, where um, we have some schools that right now it looks like I've had some stability with custodial staff. I know uh, Mr. Sauls and um, uh, Dr. Mason, we've had some concerns about turnover in our custodial ranks and trying to maintain um, folks. One of the principals told me that their current staff, I think they've got a custodian that's been there for two years now. Uh, and so when Mr. Sullen was here, we were in the routine and he was there checking, but then he also had some folks I actually grew up with working with years ago, because I did custodial work as a part-time summer job. And they were there, they took pride in the building, it was home, everything that they did. And over the years, I think we've, we've lost some of that with our turnover, as well as I, as I have honestly tried to answer Mr. Henderson's questions when he asked me about training. We do not. So that's where I think the difference comes in where those principals say 55% said they're happy. If I were to dig into that a little bit deeper, I, I think I would probably find that they've got a, a more tenured staff or head custodian. Because mm -hmm. I think in years past, you know, when I was at Southern Wayne High School as principal, I had an awesome staff, mm -hmm. but they had been in place. And when I had a vacancy, um, the head custodian would take that other person under his wing and would help mm -hmm. make sure these things were done, as well as some additional training. Um, did you have a question? I have two short ones when you're... Okay. I wanted to address the, um, um, the area of understanding the job descriptions. Yes, ma'am. I attended a meeting yesterday and I heard from some of our employees. Um, and I also talked to Dr. Dunsmore today. And I, I realized that I don't think that there is a clear understanding of what uh, this agency is supposed to be doing and what the, the, the day porters are supposed to be doing. And then the other part of that is that many of the staff members felt that the day porters are being, because they are limited in number at the eight schools, yes, that they are being pulled away. Uh, I mean, if you're, doing, uh, if you're doing a lawn, you're outside the building, but you're being called in. And they feel that some of the things that they are used to are not being done. And if it is the day porter's responsibility, then that could be an issue. And they need to understand what the agency is there for and what responsibilities they have and what controls we might have over that. Yes. So that, that really was a clear concern of mine that staff needs to be made aware. Yes, ma'am. And then maybe we will know where we need to focus our attention to get the job done. Because basically, the teachers are in the classroom and they feel that the classroom, some of them, 
feel that the classrooms are not clean like they were when they had a full custodial staff on campus. Yes, ma'am, and I and I agree, and um, your Madam service Chair, intake. with uh, with your statement and with um, looking at our job descriptions. Some of the data that I gleaned back from the principals um, was positive in that they they thanked the board for the grounds crew proposal because one of their thoughts there was was that as we move those responsibilities away from these individuals that are working inside that will help them to focus on just the buildings and the details um, because there's a concern that some of our principals address with as you know schools getting ready to be started back and our custodians are I, I spoke with one principal that told me they take one day out of the week and they do nothing but mow grass that day even during the regular school hours and the staff knows that on that day they do their best to take care of their own house so to speak unless it's an emergency because the custodians are doing the best they can to maintain these campuses and grounds. But I do think as, as we pull those responsibilities back, we need to address all of our job duties for even our custodial staff because if that's on their description for what they've done in the past and now if they do not have to do it, we need to address those as well. Okay, Mrs. Strickland, thank, thank you. you. No worries. Uh, first question, do you know when operations and maintenance actually merged? I believe that happened, Ms. Strickland, and uh, board members that have been here longer than me, please correct me, but I believe that happened around 2015, somewhere in there, um, you know, when, when we had some concerns, I'll put it that way, and then it was merged and it was added under Mr. Lassiter okay. at the time, and I believe that's how it has stayed. So when I look at the organizational chart, for my department. Well, that's what I was thinking. It was further back, but it if you don't mind, back, I believe, Mr. Preacher. And it may be. I, it was, I think it was between Glenn, what Glenn and left. Or Mr. Sutherland when he retired. It, it, so it had to be before 2011 or 2000. Dwight Glenn came after Cliff, and that was when Dwight Glenn left. Okay. So if y'all could, if you could just give me, a, you shoot it to me to text, just as a basic, you know, this was the year, just because it really does help put this together of when we started to see some of the issues that we've seen at the schools if it happened two years ago well that's definitely one thing we need to look at if it happened 15 years ago it's, it's a different way to approach this second question i have actually has to do with some of your initial data to make sure that i heard properly i have mama brain this morning you had said i think that when the teachers uh, were looking over all of is the building better yes or no 51 percent said no that was the teachers, correct? Yes, ma'am. So that question was worded. Do you feel your building slash classroom is clean each morning when you enter to begin your instructional day? So 51.6% said no, 484 said yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was on classroom, but I thought that the, the classroom was the 4851 and then there was a building better that was a 3151. Yes, ma'am. So that was the next question we asked. So we basically asked, do you feel that your building is, is cleaner or in better shape than what okay. it was two years ago? All right. So that was the first half of that. The second half you mentioned, but the overall satisfaction with your 1 to 10 scale was that 51% said it was better. Yes, ma'am. So 50.7, 12 12.7 were, I call neutral because they were right. number five and then 36.5 um, were either one to four. So that was teachers as well? Yes, this is just teachers. That was just data. teachers. Well, I guess that's where my concern was, is you have 51% in one question say it's worse, and in the exact opposite question, it says 51% say it was better. Well, you've got one question that looks at classroom. No, classroom. no, not the classroom one. Now, this is that's why I eliminated that one. The question after it was building is in better shape. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what that tells me. Yeah. It tells me that, that, that after school hours are spending more time in the hallways than they are in the public places than they are in the classroom. Well, they are. And that's why I wanted you to survey the, the teachers because I was hearing one story from the principals and I was hearing another story from, from teachers. And, um, and and I understand the principal would go and overlook the whole school and look at the public places right. and see things and say, you know, this is really looking nice. But they might not necessarily be going in all the classrooms and looking at what's in the classrooms. And, but I was getting flack from the teachers because 
right. you know, the, the jobs were not getting done and they were having to do it themselves and get their students to, to even mop their rooms and, and sweep. Okay, yes. that, this leads into my second half of this, though, and so we can move on. Um, but staying out of the classroom and staying strictly with the building better, yes or no, and building better on a scale. You have 51 that like it on one side and 51 that don't like it on the other side. That's completely contradictory to me, but that rolls into with what you were saying, Mr. Pridgen, is... The general appearance of the school is probably better. Well, yeah, the general appearance is better, but they're saying on one side it's not, and on the other side it is. I they're they're answering the classroom. No, 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 not the classroom. The other question, but let me go ahead and move to the last part, and then I'll be quiet, is with that, if you take it back to the classroom, this would revert back to the 48% the versus the yes and no on the classroom side. Do you think that could be fixed? Fixed is not the right word. But do you think that that percentage would increase if there was a direct definition of the day porters handle A and the night staff handles B? Because once I think that's fleshed out, you might actually see that classroom number change. But that classroom number has nothing right. to do with 51% say the building is worse and 51% say the building's better. Uh, um, if I can divert. I'm done. <laughs> I had a conversation with a parent, an athletic conversation, great conversation with a parent. We talked for 45 minutes. In the end, the concern all boiled down to communication. Right. And I think in a lot of things, if we have to be willing as adults, tackle those difficult conversations, communicate, and then have our goals as to what we want to accomplish and move forward. So yes, ma'am, one of the things I've seen in the data, and I think the data supports, is when it comes to those schools that currently have high standard, just that, that difference between what the expectation is that the day porters may have and the expectation per the contract the high standard may have or we need to clarify that these are things and then monitoring those things. Um, Mr. Pridgen, to piggyback on your response, one of the things that, that I had as a recommendation was to limit what we do in our buildings after hours. For example, I know we have a school right now that is being used every Saturday. Um, and when you're a custodian or when you're high standard and you're trying to clean floors to get those buildings prepared, if you've got groups using your buildings, and I know, I know we're publicly funded, I know we, we are open to our uh, buildings being used by our communities, but we really need to think about that because as our custodians and high standard work really hard to get these buildings prepared, and they're moving through a schedule and they finish a building and maybe they finished a week to two weeks before children come back but yet we're still having people on our floors and things done that can cause a lot of frustration sometimes by those men or women that have to keep these buildings in check Tim let me ask you a question about that when people use our building they have to pay a rental fee they should and part yes, of that sir. rental fee is for custodial fees though. Mm -hmm. so why are we having that problem if we if they're having to pay for cu extra custodial services when they're using our facility? My concern, Mr. Bridgen, is not with the fee for custodial services; it's the maintenance side of it. So, by example, I'd give you is as um, so this particular school high standards in they've done the floors a week ago or more, but this group is still using um, our facility over the weekend. Doors open, doors closed, air conditioning running, doors open and those issues there. So yes, they pay a fee for our custodians to be there, but if they're marking up, causing issues to the floors, we pre I'm just using this as one example, or it could also be the bathrooms using those. It takes time for custodial staff to rebuff, re-strip, or re-wax re a floor. Mm -hmm. So yes, sir, you're right. We do charge fees for these individuals to use our buildings to hopefully cover those costs. But there's a lot of things that are the intangibles that you can't cover. Or do you feel like we're not charging enough in fees? Ms. Bridget, I, I do not know enough to answer that question. My honest answer is I would need to, to see what our fee for services are or is currently for that. I think it's currently $50 <coughs> that they have to pay. Is that not right? Mr. Pay for what? $50 per day. $50 per uh, event. Well, we normally will charge based on the number of hours Okay. So you're talking about to be there to open the door. trash and sweeping, not buffing the 
All right, uh, Mr. Smith and then Mr. Flowers. Just to, <clears throat> to clarify something, um, Mr. Pridgen, all of the service, all of the uh, patrons that are using our facilities are not paid patrons. We do have um, agreements with the City of Goldsboro, Rickard Parks Department, for instance, and they're, to my understanding, they're not paying anything <coughs> specifically to use our facilities, and they use them constantly. So, um, yes, and uh, so that's 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 not completely so that everybody's paying um, this uh, this so-called agreement between us and the Rec and Parks Department uh, has them in our buildings all the time. And we do have an agreement with Parks and Rec, a memorandum of <clears throat> understanding that was yeah, in place. But it's no money no, exchange. It, it's more of they help maintain our fields. That they use and provide things there in exchange for being able to use some of our facilities. But yes, sir, no money exchanges there. Mr. Flowers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Dr. Harrell. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, I can tell you've been working hard on this. Thank you. Um, to me, and listening to everything that everybody says, the real issue here, we're considering a, a contract with high standard, but to me, it seemed like the real issue here is do we uh, maintain our private custodial staff or do we contract it? Um, the bottom line is, is that's the real question uh, here. And so, Dr. Harrell, in the state of North Carolina, I think there's what, 120 some school systems? There's more than there is counties, but however many there are. Do you, do you happen to know how many of those are contracted for custodial services? No, sir, I do not know a total amount. I know Durham County contracted for a while. Um, I couldn't, t I can find that out. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, if 80% if of them contract, then the collective wisdom of all of those counties seems like that would be a, something we would need to consider. Uh, if 30% of them contract and 70% of them continue to have their own, then that would influence me um, on this. As far as the survey goes, I could see how, and the survey is a good idea and it's good information, but I could see how that survey would somewhat be skewered by the fact of people that you're asking having allegiance and friendships that they have built with the custodial staff. And, you know, you're asking them, are you happy? And they, they think, well, you know, I'm really happy with my custodian. He comes and empties the trash every time I asked him to. You know, so I don't want to take his job away from him so and we're not doing that but I could see how some people might would have that mindset uh, the businessman part of me wants to say that contracting this service is the best thing to do and and we receive numbers uh, as far as the cost and everything but when you got a bunch of employees <coughs> and a bunch of equipment there are a lot of hidden costs that are not going to just show up in the numbers. Right. Um, such things as just doing the payroll for those extra employees that's on us. That, that's not going to show up in your numbers, but that's going to be a cost attributed to us. The cost of, of duplication of equipment, where I've heard you say that we got so many lawnmowers scattered all over, all over the county, way more than we, do, than we need to cut the grass that we have but we have one here at this school and one here at this school. Um, so having heard, it, heard everything that's been said, um, I might just suggest to the board, now we have agreed to remove um, the, the ground maintenance and make a separate crew. Yes, sir. Um, and those will be pulled, I guess, some kind of way out of our custodial staff now and develop this. I don't know exactly how you're going to do it, but we're not going to let anybody go. We're just going to we're going to delegate that this crew cuts grass and does landscaping, and these folks do uh, cleaning in the schools. I might just suggest to the board that we go on that plan for a year and see if because it's my gut feelings that everything's going to improve on that plan because. If I was a young man and I was looking a job, I would love to do the landscaping at the schools, but I would not want to clean the schools. To me, it's two different jobs. And if we separate the grass cutting and landscaping in a crew and 
we have a crew that's happy to do that and enjoy doing that and then we have our cleaning staff in our schools and go forward like that for a year or so we might find that we solve a lot of this situations that we have right now what you know by just changing that up so that's consideration we keep talking about high standard as far as who we contract to do the services if we decide to go that way we can make that decision based on the data that we have and and you're contracting them for a year and if they're if they don't live up to that contract we don't have to renew their contract it's not like we're hiring somebody when you hire people and then you have to fire them that's not nearly as comfortable as not renewing a contract um, so those are my thoughts on this subject thank you again for your hard work thank you mr Flower. okay M one last one last thing um and i <clears throat> something that mr flowers said we the proposal does not guarantee everybody a job correct so our as we had discussions <clears throat> we narrowed this down from three companies that are were the only three that gave us um, requests for proposals rfps uh, we went with two which of course was ssc that finally gave us presentations as well as high standard and high standards the last proposal that come forward from the facilities committee was to go with them look at 40 day porters as Miss Burden had a concern about our, our people and we all do we had discussions about uh, looking at keeping 50 day porters and then if we moved at least 12 11 12 over to the grounds then that would leave us with we'd have 62 people and then high standard has told us that they would be able to look at offering employment to those people that we have currently in place because they're going to need to add to their crew to cover all of our buildings so our goal obviously is not for anyone to lose their job but it could be that someone is moved over to high standard cleaning on their payroll for lack of better words and then others stay with us so so in essence while we are contemplating the uh, possible options there are no guarantees that everyone will remain employed so there is more to this than just do we contract or do we uh, maintain our own custodians? Yes, sir. It's, it's, a it's a big there's decision. There's a lot of variables. It could change. It could mean it could be a life-changing decision for a lot of our employees. Yes, Because right. people will be leaving. People will be coming off the state retirement system if they go at higher standard. Correct. Yes. So yeah. high st high standard pays more, as they pay seventeen dollars and twenty five cents an hour. Right. But they do not offer benefits at this time. They can, right. but they do not offer benefits at this time. So just want to make sure we understand there's more to it than just the numbers. Yes, sir. So higher standards offers no benefits at all? They do <coughs> with certain contracts. So, for example, um, Madam Chair, they clean Mount Olive University. At Mount Olive University, the university requested that they include benefits in their package for those employees. So at the University of Mount Olive, they are cleaned by high standard paid by the university for that contract and they included in the charge of that contract the additional cost to make sure those employees had benefits so that's somewhere mr a 22 23 dollars an hour when you look at so our staff plus, benefits. plus benefits yeah it's um, a little over 18 dollars an hour in that area. Yeah. but with high standards additional pay it's about 22 23 for for what Mount Olive University is paying them for cleaning services to include that in their contract. So they do offer that, yes ma'am. We, we have a, because we discussed this at our last board meeting and that was one of the reasons of going out and maybe getting a survey from some of the principals. But I mean, we've discussed 40 or 50, I mean, there's, a, there's a possibility we may, meet, we may need more than 50 day porters. Yes, because um, Mr. West, not to cut you off, the survey was really interesting talking to the principals because I did have a principal or two that just had a concern to make sure uh, they were not against the idea, but they wanted to make sure they had enough help left in the building to manage those daily things there. So you are correct. It could be, depending on the size of the facility, it could be one, two, or three, depending on how big the campus is. Because I, I think everybody up here understands that a, a custodian is only a title these people have they they are a lot more involved in the everyday activity of a school 
I mean, some of these principals depend on these people for a lot more than just custodial services. So. Right, yes, sir. And that's the intangibles. Um, and it's also, I think, to keep in mind that you know, when we did the request for proposal, we did the request for proposal um, based on a set, set standard or ideas that we wanted to do. Any provider that we would potentially go for, not just or go with, excuse me, high standard, SSC, Jenny King, whoever does these large groups, we would come back and meet with them to negotiate exactly what's going to be on that contract. They put forth their bid based on what we put out, if that makes sense. So we would have to come back, uh, Mr. West, if we move forward with this and say, okay, we've agreed to do this. Now these are the details, like some of the concerns that we've had, those daily classroom things, dusting, those things like that. Well, since since we're going to be the ones we're paying the bill so i mean obviously we need to get what we think is the best for every employee that we have we may have some employees that decide hey you know I, this is my chance i mean they may not want to stay employed at wayne county public schools i don't know they can probably find a job making more better having better pay but that's a decision they make but we we still need to, to, to make it the most advantageous for our people that we have. I mean, obviously, there's some people that probably need to be rift or may be rift for whatever different reasons other than just the fact that we're going with another service. But I, 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 it's just so, I mean, and I know I appreciate all the work you've done, and you've done a tremendous amount of work. I don't want you to get frustrated because there's a lot. It seems like you're getting, I don't know, we're just pit, taking a shot at some of the things. But I, I, it's, my concern is with the people that we have that want to stay yes, employed, that are good employees. So, Well, my goal is to do what's the best for children. So I, whatever you want me to do, I get it done. And it, it is about saving. I mean, obviously, we want to save money. Exactly. I know Mr. Hayes wants to save every penny he can, but... You know, it's sometimes it's, uh, you know, it, 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 there's an expectation in a school district and a school system. Custodial services are one of them. If we can save money by going a different route or, or, or you know, restructuring what we do, that's fine. But right. at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's not all about saving money when you're dealing with people's livelihoods. So. Yes, sir. But do I think there's a better way? Yeah, because we do have some issues right. in every building we have. So. Well, and I think this. I know we're, 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 we're going on and on. I do think that the data has provided some good data as that we, we do have some opportunities for improvement, some positive things we can do. I, and I'm going to say, I won't say anything else, Ms. Burton, if you let me ask, ask one more question. All right, I have witnesses. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> one, one possible explanation could be with the uh, differentiation in the data could be that you you used the Likert scale for one question and you used yes or no for the other. Right. And when you're using different methodologies, you and I both know that you're going to get different responses depending on. So if we have, we're consistent with the Likert scale, for instance, throughout the entire survey, mm -hmm. I think we may have gotten, we would not have had this, uh, this contrast. You know, right. that, that, that's a possibility. Would you not agree? Yes, and it could be when you, because surveys are always hard right. when you're trying to put a survey together. And again, Mr. Dirksen helped me, so which thank you. I couldn't have got it done without him. The verbiage, Blank words him, that right? you use, no, he did, <laughs> it's all on my shoulders. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be up here. Stand behind me, Ken. Um, but seriously, you're correct. A word here or there, someone can interpret that word differently. Um, you know, sometimes the best data is what we're doing here, face to face to have input. So. Okay. Any uh, other questions or? <clears throat> no. Thank you very much, Dr. Harold. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, at this time, uh, I think we need to move to uh, open comments. It was not on our. Didn't we say agree? We, no. Oh, we're not going to do no. it. No. Okay. We're not going to do it. All right. We have to announce it in advance in order to do it. And uh, that was a discussion uh, because we were trying to do it. But we have approached it from a different direction. Yeah, yeah Madam Chair, if I may, um, board action under item A, my suggestion is that we pull that until we have an opportunity for uh, 
Dr. Harrell to put together some different information, but more importantly, to be able to have the additional comments mm -hmm. and put that on the agenda for the end of the month's contract. If the board is okay <coughs> with that, my only request would be that we do um, an approval to extend high standards contract with the work they're doing now for a period of one month. I, I, I'm, I take that recommendation under advisement and I would like to move that we extend the contract for high standard cleaning for an additional month and that we postpone any decision regarding the contract until next board meeting where we can invite public comment. Okay. I second that motion. All right. Any discussion? All right, if you are in agreement with the motion as stated, would you please indicate by raising your right hand? Okay. And I guess Mr. Flowers has a no vote. He's not present. Okay. Now, um, to the attorney, I need to pull number A, or did I do that with... Uh, the approval of the motion. No, you, A was not pulled. It was just changed, and you just okay. did that. All right. So it's, it's not a no vote. Yeah, it's not a no vote. It's, it's not, just, and Mr. Flowers is not a no vote. Yeah, he's yeah. just not it's just here. Five okay. It's just five. Okay. So it's a five vote. All right. Uh, purchase orders and contracts, Mr. Hayes. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we have just a couple of uh, purchase orders that uh, need to be approved ahead of our uh, next finance and board meeting. Uh, they're listed on the um, your attachments along with the supporting uh, detail. Uh, so, not sure, but I'll entertain any questions with Dr. Harrell's help uh, regarding uh, these purchase orders. Give you an update if you like those on those purchase orders. Um, Abby's Carpets of Goldsboro for Commons Road Elementary School. That was something that was on the 17 18 small projects list. So that is finishing up trying to complete that, and we can get that carpet done before children return there. So that, that money was allocated for that out of small projects. Our number two item, the northeast um, boiler, and then northwest is kind of in this together. Northeast. Board members, if you remember back in January when we had our nine and 10 degree days and had that week or so, it never got above freezing. The fuel line froze in the ground at Northeast and our gentleman from maintenance went out there and actually had to bring up a fuel truck and run a line on the ground into there to keep the boiler running. Well, it has not been repaired yet. So we're getting, this is what, last month of spring. So we need to have that fixed. And what they would like to do is have that boiler converted to natural gas, as well as the boiler at North um, West Elementary School. We'd also like to have the boiler at North, uh, excuse me, at Eastern Wayne Elementary converted to natural gas too. It's not on here, <coughs> but they're all the same type boiler. And when we convert to natural gas, the only time our mechanics have been out there on the call is when it is out of gas versus on the diesel and the fuel when they get quite a bit. So number one, the one at Northeast, we, we have no choice. It has to be fixed because we have no heat currently right there. Uh, and then the rest of pest one, we currently, our pest coverage has lapsed. We currently have no pest coverage. So I would like to extend this uh, contract for their pest coverage, please, so we can get back and have our buildings treated, especially with children in return. How long a period would that be? <coughs> for which one, uh, Mr. Rest of pest. For them to get started would be? How long the, is it if, if we for one year? Okay. Yeah, the per, the purchase order is for the entire school year. Okay, are they doing termite also? Yes, sir. They'll do whatever. Um, one of the things I'd like to do. This is another one of those contracts that I'd like to be involved in more as we discuss things to make sure this stuff gets done. I've addressed this with the principals at um, retreat to make sure everyone knows where their uh, pest management log is and items are being logged correctly because I found some cases where some of our staff did not know that we have had a contract for things to be treated and some things have gone untreated simply because of the communication word. Would you double check if they're doing Absolutely. termites? And the reason I'm asking that is they, they do my pest control at home, 
but at the same time, I had asked them if they would do a commercial property that I own, and they told me they did not do termite work. So, <laughs> um, you know, if they're spraying for bugs, that's one thing, but if they're spraying, I mean, that, the owner of the company told me he did not do termite work, and he referred me to somebody. I have asked. Um, so, okay. Well, that's a question you need to ask. <laughs> Other questions? <laughs> We're not laughing at you. Dr. Johnson was We have here. a concern about the termites. He's, he's, he's killing us over here. I just said the folks we have in this building are immune to whatever is spreading in here. So. <laughs> Well, I keep in mind, one of the things I would like to do with Mr. Hayes' help is, um, I know I've heard all of you since I've been back in September have some concerns about contracts and when things are up. I'd like to have a, a more of a handle so that we do not have a lapse, <coughs> especially with pest coverage. <coughs> because when we have a lapse, it's like your home. That gives an opportunity for these things to fester up before we can get it back under control. Yep. My, I have a question. Um, you said that Eastern Wayne Elementary also needs um, <coughs> for the of the number two fuel oil burning boilers to the LP gas boilers yes ma'am it's not on this list when are you considering bringing that to the board well yeah that that um, purchase order I believe is already in the system it just got missed when we were putting together this list the cost is basically the same okay so if it's permissible I'd like to go ahead and get that because we could potentially have these con well especially northeast because there's no heat there now boilers there it's just not hooked up we get that converted as well as the other two since they're sister schools. Um, that would eliminate a lot of maintenance for our men going out there. All right, so when we approve this, you are, we are including Eastern Wayne Elementary as well? Please. Okay. All right, so you need a vote. Yes, ma'am. I need a motion. You need to, you're going to need to add Eastern Wayne to which one? This one. Uh, the uh, the list of purchase orders it will be the same um, vendor at the same rate. <coughs> so uh, we could add it as three A. Could we add it as three A? Or even number five, eight or or. or number five. I was just trying to keep them to get in sync. I don't care as long as we approve them. This would be with a rest of pest. No, it would no. be with, with a SPC mechanical. SPC mechanical. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's identical to the other. And three. we have two there, so could we list it as 3A or do we have to go to 5? Go to 5. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the purchase orders with the addition of number 5 with SPC Mechanical um, doing the conversion at Eastern Wayne Elementary. Was that accurate? Not the middle school? Eastern Wayne Elementary. Yes, sir. I second that. All right, we have a second. Madam uh, Chair? Yes. This should be subject to legal review of the contracts. Subject okay. to legal review of the contracts. Yeah. All right. We still have a second, Mr. Flowers. Second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor of um, the purchase order approval as presented? No, we had to add that on, didn't we? Oh, we added it. We on. Added. Okay. All in That's favor uh, of following through with the purchase orders uh, as presented? Um, please indicate by raising your right hand. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I would yes. like to make a motion that we approve C and D as information only and F as a first reading underneath board action as well as, well, <coughs> I'd like to do 4J separate. So I would like to make a motion that we go ahead and approve C, D, and F as a first reading. I'll second that. All right. Any discussion? All right. All in favor of uh, approving C, D, and F as a first reading, please indicate by raising your right hands. All right. I need a motion to uh, approve 4J 
which is the uh, general <coughs> personnel board report, and I will recuse myself. I'd like to make a motion time. that we approve 4J, the general personnel board report. Second. Incl you should include in the motion that Ms. Burden's recused from With voting. Ms. Burden's recusal. Second. All right. Any discussion? No. <laughs> <laughs> good catch, good wow. catch. I just caught myself. <laughs> All in favor of the motion as stated, please indicate by raising your right hand. Any opposed? All right, thank you very much. All right, now Agency we have a consent, consent agenda. agenda. I'd like to make a motion that we approve. Oh, go ahead, sorry. A consent agenda is a group of items passed with a single motion and a vote. These materials and or items are routine business or have been thoroughly discussed in committee meetings, open to the public and attended by board members. No debate is allowed on any item included on the consent agenda. If a board member wants separate consideration of any item, it may be removed by request. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Second. All right. All in favor, indicate by raising your right hand. Any opposed? All right. Closing remarks. We want to begin with Mr. Fridgen. I have none. Okay. And you'll excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Strickland. I have no comments. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. West. I have no comments, Madam Chair. Mr. Flowers. <coughs> Excuse me, no comments. Mr. Smith. I have no comments. Oh, this is a good role, I'm telling you. <laughs> Dr. Dunsmore. <laughs> no, I'm not falling in that one. I have uh, no comments, Madam Chair. My only comment is to thank you all very, very much. And for those persons that made presentations today, we truly appreciate it and the work that you've done to respond to our concerns and needs. And with that, all in favor of it, I need a motion to adjourn. So I move. Second. All right, I know there's no discussion, so uh, you may indicate by raising your right hand. Okay. <laughs>